As, I, as you can see in the agenda, I'm also a keynote speaker along with my moderator role, and I see a linkages with what just Claus has said about it. So let me share with you a few slides that how this machine to machine and IoT is contributing to the vision and a mission and a reality when we talk about smart cities in India. Uh, because I see, see a linkage is before we invite all other speakers uh, from the industry. So with this, let me uh, begin with a short presentation uh, where I would like to share that when we talk about ICT, we do talk about interoperability. And when we talk about interoperability, these standards has to be a global standard. It cannot be a regional standard or a local standard. So this slide, what I'm trying to highlight is always the question pops, pops up saying, do we lay standards when we talk about smart cities? The answer is, could be yes. But what I would like to say, it's not that the standard does not exist. But the standard do exist, but they exist in verticals, not as a horizontal or a combined standard when we talk about from a smart city point of view, which means we does have a gap when you talk about standards. But one thing has been coming out clearly that we need a common standard and the area which we can address when we talk about smart city is the IoT platform. So at least for an IoT platform, it is generally applicable to the smart cities rollout. So if you roll out smart cities, which is everything smart, which means ICT, the IoT platform, yes, you can implement it from the day one. Uh, it is important from the day one because it does address the cross-domain areas and including the big data, which means IoT platform has to be integrated and implemented as a common standard and a global standard. As I said, several standard does exist. It's not that they do not exist, but of course somebody has to stitch them together and put them as part of the smart cities. And this is some examples we have just put it for as a reference uh, in water management and the smart street light. On the right hand side, which you see uh, a graph, again talks about what different standards exist in what different areas. And if you see the communication and connectivity, we do have a lot of standards. Again, they need to be stitched. And that's why European Union has come out with a project and asked ETSI to develop two technical reports, one talking about, which is a number is 375, maybe in this slide you can, you can see it further, that the European Commission runs the European Research and Innovation Program around Horizon 2020. Horizon 2020 is 80 billion euro project on research, and out of this, a lot has been dedicated around IoT. I mean, they are talking about seven large-scale pilots, and one of the large-scale pilots is smart cities, apart from the IoT, which is wearable, farming, leaving, aging well-being, autonomous vehicles, smart water, smart manufacturing. So these are the seven large-scale pilots which has been identified as part of this Horizon 2020 program and what 40 million euro has been dedicated or exclusively aligned, uh, assigned for this particular large-scale pilots. And to, to, to do this large-scale pilot, they have asked ETSI to carry out a report, one report on standards and second report on gap analysis. And they, they call it as a STF, uh, which is a uh, specialist task force 505 has been created for this work. Now, if you see, there are two TRs, the technical reports, which ITC is consolidating. One is TR103375, which is nothing but consolidation of IoT standards, landscape, and a future evolution. And the second TR will talk about the gap analysis. I mean, if you see the timeline, it matches the Horizon 2020 large-scale pilots, and we believe that by November this year, this will be concluded, printed, and the large-scale pilot rollout will start in EU around these seven subjects. With that, this is one of, this is few slides I would like to share from Messina Research, which carried out in 2016, uh, uh, specifically around smart cities, and they concluded that there are three possible routes which cities could take when they implement these smart city solutions. One is the anchor route, which means a piecemeal, which means a word vertical at a time. That could be one possible solution. And I think few of the cities does implementing like this street lighting, smart street lighting or something like that. And the second is the beta city route. So you have a pilot city and then you increase it and make it a large scale pilot, large scale city. Uh, Builds on hands on experience through pilot program. And the third is the platform route. You implement a platform and you build on top of it. This has been uh, concluded by this, this machina research. Including this, what they, they say is that 
smart city platform brings significant efficiencies when number of application grows, which means if you have a common standard, if you have implemented that standard as part of smart cities, it is easy to go scales. It is easy to increase the, the, the scope of that rollout, which means you have a data which could be shared. And when you share a data, you can bring the innovative applications around the smart cities. Similarly, you open up the APIs. When you again you have a common standard, when you have a common standard, an open standard, you open up the APIs and then developers come forward and build the applications suitable for that cities. So, so these are a few of the benefits, including the API, the open data and the connectivities. But lastly, it says open standards are crucial. If you really want to have a real applications, open standards are crucial. And that's what we talk about when M2M for sustainable success. With that, this is one of the concluding statement Machina Research has put forward. They say, uh, open standard in IoT deployment would accelerate growth by 27% and reduce deployment cost by 30%. And that's the potential which the open standard could play uh, when you talk about uh, IoT platform implementation as part of smart city rollout. With that, this is one of the slides I always show it when we talk about smart city rollouts. You need to have a vision. Every city needs to have a vision. When you, when you frame a vision, you list down the different verticals you would like to address as part of that vision. Now, once you have a vision, then you start digitizing and sensorizing that cities. That's the first step. You do it. So once you have the sensors, once you digitize the city, then you build a dashboard. You've got to have an accumulated information as part of your dashboard. That's your next step. And the final step is once you have the control of your city, from your digitization and sensorization point of view, then you start expanding it. Then you make it bigger and bigger and bigger, and you bring more and more functionality. This is how I think the city's rollout should happen and will happen and will take it to the next label of, of success. This is an example from Singapore, and that's exactly how they built it. If you see the Singapore, the, in the past, they had the, bibon, the fiber backbone network. They had the Wi-Fi network in the city. On top of it, what they did is they deploy an operable system, I mean, which means the IoT, a kind of IoT platform, they put it on top of it using the backhaul and the Wi-Fi network. And then they start deploying the sensors and the digitization of that city. And then they increase the scope. So pilot became a big pilot, a big commercial platform. And then once that was done, then they started talking about the sustainable leaving, how to go big scale, how to have a digital harbor of, uh, to drive the economic growth. If you see how the money was put, if you see almost around equal 1.1 1. 1, 1 plus billion Singapore dollar were staggered around for, for, for some, somewhere around seven to eight years. That's how they invested that money and that's how they build the vision. That's how they roll out uh, in the cities like small, uh, Singapore. These are few key requirements which we always say that we need to list down when we talk about smart city rollouts, horizontal platform. You should not have a platform for vertical solutions, but a horizontal platform. And it is important, uh, especially open standards, which can leverage the converged network, which can bring the different solutions under one umbrella. Then existing deployment. We must not forget, we do have an existing deployment, which means we need to capitalize on those existing de de deployment. We should not say, whatever is existing, it's bad, it's wrong, it's, it's finished. No, whatever platform we built it, that should have a capability to bring this existing deployment. And then third is participatory and innovative. You cannot say, I have implemented the smart city solutions, I'm done. No, you need to keep the innovation going on. And that will only happen when you have an open system. And finally, security. The most important part is the security. We did talk about it yesterday, whether it is cyber security or telecom security and IT security, but security has to be a part of it. And security is always a beginning. It's not the end of it. With that, this is an example based on one M2M rollout, Busan, in Korea. This is how it was rolled out. A one M2M open system implementation was carried out through a project called Ocean. And in that project, they did take care of the existing application in the city. So government had rolled out few of the applications. They said, we want to make use of these applications and integrate with one M2M platform. That was done. So if you see this, they use the existing wireless network, which is LTE, 2G, or 3G. They integrated that one M2M platform on top of it. And similarly, the existing applications were taken care of, the government applications. And then not only here, there is a possibility that there could be vertical M2M solutions existing. So that were also interworking was done with one M2M. That's how this one M2M was integrated. 
If with this as a Busan, an example, we believe with 1M2M, the blueprint for a smart city will look like this. Uh, you will have an existing applications, which means you just need to adapt, put an adapter uh, and, and configure and connect with the smart city front end. When you talk about smart city front end, you do talk about common functions. And that's how the 1M2M has addressed these common functions, which we have implemented in C dot platform. And these are the various common platform, including device interworking, locations, group management, security, device management. These are front end. The front end will communicate with through gateways to different options, different applications. And then you have a smart city back end. In smart city back end, with the help of broker, will consolidate more or less the big data and a big data and a data management, including the cloud management. And if you see further, then you will, with that open data, you will have a semantics. And with that semantics, the RESTful APIs, you will configure with the third party applications, the analytics applications, or the city applications. If you see this as a blueprint, including the dashboard, this is how the different players does exist today. And you can see 1M2M would take place in many of the places, including Hadoop as a big data analytics, Firebear as an open API. So this is how we believe 1M2M will help smart city rollout uh, uh, from, a, from a bigger scale point of view. This is what I would like to share. In conclusion, if I say every city is unique, hence we need to have a vision for that particular city. Once we have that vision, then we built initial set of use cases for that city. Then we built an architecture on top of that use cases and leverage the cross-sector applications while using open standard and, and, and integrate the existing deployment. And this is where the 1M2M common platform will help roll out in a bigger scale. With that, thank you very much. And I hope uh, it was useful. This is why our, our website.